Hey, it's Ron, and I'm here with, with Elizabeth. Elizabeth and Colin. Colin. And Elizabeth, maybe you can tell me a little bit about why I'm talking to you right now. Sure. So uh, we are at the Microsoft uh, CRM 2011 launch event in Vancouver, and uh, we just sat through the sales and marketing session. And Colin Nickel here from Island Savings Credit Union came over to uh, uh, talk to Microsoft about uh, and the audience about uh, their experience implementing CRM. Okay. Well, what what type of questions did they ask Colin during the so, presentation? Uh, the first question was uh, basically about um, why um, why a CRM system for wealth management division at Island Savings. So what I talked about was the fact that we wanted something, it was like why do we choose the Microsoft and it's really about, firstly we, when I arrived we have three broad divisions and uh, very much paper based, no real integration with any system, um, lack of compliance requirements as well with regard to they're able to manipulate the information after the event. So really what we need to look at was actually having a system that could be locked down was one of the key priorities there. Plus also we weren't really warehousing any of the information for us to use as a corporation because it was sitting on each individual's desktops. So what we want to do is to sort of warehouse that information more readily or make it more readily accessible for us. Right, and uh, after that, the next question was around uh, why did you specifically choose Microsoft CRM for that system? Yeah. So, looked at um, the scalability, the customization of the program, um, and the fact that we want to take the, the system potentially organizational wide. So, at this present time, looking at uh, individual systems that wasn't going to meet our requirements, we didn't really want something that was bolted on. And we like the fact that everybody is familiar with Microsoft and the Outlook program. So, for to try and introduce a new system that's not integrated, there's likely it's going to, the interface is going to fall over, we're going to have issues with it, whereas CRM basically lives and breathes inside of the Outlook program. So um, it is a, a great solution because it's fully integrated. And so you guys uh, have implemented your, uh, I guess, first phase of the system. Yep. Um, so what about the user adoption issues? Uh, how, did, how did you face user adoption? Well, we, we ran a few training sessions. Um, with everybody and with every organization, you're going to have an adoption rate that varies across individuals based on their skill set and their like of technology. And uh, again, also introducing processes. A lot of the individuals have their own systems, they have their own processes, they've been allowed to, to run those for a number of years. They deem them successful. So they needed to really understand there's a bigger picture here with um, you know an organizational stamp that was going on the, on the compliance and also the relationship management piece. So what we tried to do is, uh, what we tried to do, what we did was we launched the CRM, uh, we ran training sessions, Knowledge Tech uh, support was heavily in that with the customization, the design to make sure it was bespoke and made sense. And then from there we, uh, we launched the CRM. So again, we had a little bit of people who adopted it really early, thought it was the best system in the world, that tended to be the people who were paper based. The ones who had some systems or tools in place, they always favoured their own, but you know, through a few more discussions and showing them the benefit of the tool, they adopted it, so it was good. So uh, lastly, what's, what's next for Island Savings? Oh, that's around? huge. Um, so what's next with Island Savings? Um, really what we're looking to do is uh, we've got some workflow work to be done at the moment. We're looking forward to the connection to the social media. Social media is, is gathering a lot of pieces, we're all aware. So it's how do we connect with that. We've got to observe a lot of privacy rules and uh, the regulators as well, so we can't share information like wildly. Um, but certainly there is a place for um, you know, some of the advertising, getting to know our clients. I mean, we've always got to know our clients through the KYC process from a compliance standpoint, but not necessarily from a relationship standpoint. So what we're trying to do is really understand their goals, understand you know who they interact with, you know where they interact. Are they on Twitter? Are they using social media? Um, you know what clubs they're associated with, what groups they're associated with, and you know also what's their family members because um, that's a big thing. The other part of this is looking at who they have in the way of other advisors, so their accountants, lawyers, other bankers, to see what we can do to try and get those individuals together, and especially for more of our high net worth individuals, they're expecting a conference style uh, discussion to take place, and if we know that um, we've got six clients who are dealing with the same accountant, then basically that just adds to that relationship as well, so that can extend it further, because maybe the accountant doesn't hasn't made that stamp in their mind that they're dealing with that six of his clients are doing that savings. So we can certainly further and uh, augment that relationship. That sounds awesome. Oh, that's great. great. Well, that's great. Well, hey, Elizabeth, where can people find you on the web? You're at... at knowledgetech.com. Knowledge Tech. And Colin, you're at... I'm at islandsavings.ca. Oh, that's great. Oh, sorry. Not Island Savings, I'll see you. It's Island Savings.com, you need to edit that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah.